It's the start of Mental Health Week, and with the COVID-19 crisis putting our frontline workers at risk and everyone else at home social distancing and isolating, mental health has been on my mind. I've got some questions, and I thought you might too, so I've invited my friend Lil Petrelli from the Canadian Mental Health Association to talk about it. Lil, thanks so much for being here today. My pleasure, Joshua. Thank you for the invite. So let's get started. I want you to tell me a little bit about the Canadian Mental Health Association, Brant Holden Norfolk Branch. Okay, sure. So CMHA Brand Haldeman Norfolk is a community-based mental health agency, and we provide services for those 16 years of age and older living with mental illness and their families. Brantford, Brant County, including Haldeman and Norfolk counties. Okay, so how are you guys operating differently during the COVID-19 crisis? Sure. So supports are still being offered to our clients and referrals are still being accepted by the community. So that's that remains status quo. Uh, what has changed, however, is that we have suspended face to face contacts temporarily. So we're providing supports by telephone, email, messenger, FaceTime, uh, teleconferencing and video conferencing. There's there's a lot of communication tools out there that we've been uh, using. So if anybody was looking for help or uh, support, or if they wanted to reach out, everything is, you know, slightly different, but operating normally. Absolutely. We're all available by telephone and um, no calls will, will go on unanswered because we, we're virtually uh, working still, right? That's great to hear. So can we talk about some ways that, you know, during this right now, we can strengthen and enhance our mental health? Right. So considering the seriousness of COVID, it's very natural to feel anxious, stressed, and fearful. Most of us have never experienced such a situation in our lifetime and just want things to get back to, to normal. Our mental health has definitely suffered as a result of COVID. Uh, it's important to keep things in perspective. However, we need to build our resilience and make the best of this situation. Self-care is critically important at this, this point in time. We need to practice healthy habits such as eating right, getting enough sleep, exercising on a regular basis, and still enjoying fun activities and hobbies, just in a little different way. So if you're working from home, and I know many of us are in that situation right now, it's important to establish that balance between work and home. Those lines can be blurred when you don't have set work hours. So it's important to maintain that same schedule and routine as you would at the office. Most importantly, we need to keep connected. This is the big thing right now. Uh, we're all facing, we're all feeling, you know, that that social interaction is really missing in our lives. So physical distance shouldn't result in social isolation. So it's important to check in with those that you care about, your family, friends, neighbors, co-workers, right? We're, I'm still checking in with, with co-workers. It's important. Uh, you can do that by phone, FaceTime, email, Skype, WhatsApp, and other forms of communication. Now, people need social interaction to survive, and without it, there's isolation and loneliness, especially if you're living with mental illness or are alone. I agree with, with everything that you're saying, and uh, I'm so glad that you're sharing it with us. Um, I know that since this has all started, one of the biggest impacts uh, for me is my routine. And, uh, you know, I'm at work, but I'm not at work. And it's hard to, you know, stay by the same clock. Um, I'm very thankful. I'm a part of a very yes. large team and we're doing our, our weekly meetings and we're having our Zoom calls and we're, we're talking with one another and we're keeping each other motivated on track. But, you know, as you were saying, it, it's so important to have that connection. And if we can't have it physically, at least we can have it digitally. And I, I love how you talked about connecting with people, um, you know, just picking up the phone and checking in on your friends and your family and, you know, your neighbors. And um, yes. there's so many resources out there. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about, you know, some of the resources and programs that you know that are available in our community. Yes, well, you know, if people are struggling or if they just need that extra support, um, 
all mental health services have been deemed essential. So they're all operational and able to assist. So as you would call any other agency, including our agency, you could just call and um, you know try to get in to see your worker. If you're interested in a referral, and as I said, we're still accepting referrals, or if you just want information on what's out there, definitely you can call us as we are operational. So the help is there if you need it. And exactly. there's so many uh, groups that have popped up on social media, neighbors helping neighbors, and uh, you know people who are helping other people with grocery shopping, or you know neat little things, uh, artwork going in yes. the windows, and you know the ribbons around the trees, and yeah, there's so much out there. Yes. And I think it leads into this what I want to talk about next was just how important friendship, companionship, and mentorship is during this time, and and checking in on people. And uh, that's thank you. You're welcome. I'm, so, I'm really, yeah, go ahead. I'm really overwhelmed by just how extraordinary kind and, and people are, are just banding together to get through this. I mean, this is Canada, right? So we have to take care of one another, right? We do. So Mental Health Week, what is it? And how can people be more involved? Okay, so Mental Health Week is starting uh, this week on May 4th. And the purpose of Mental Health Week is to create an awareness of the importance of mental health in, in our lives. Now this year, Mental Health Week is very timely as we're all struggling with the impact of COVID. So the theme of Mental Health Week has always been get loud as per the t-shirt. This year, the planning committee is promoting another important theme, which is keep connected. Uh, this year, Mental Health Week will be virtual. The planning committee has done an amazing job of using social media to offer all types of fun activities, which focus on taking care of our mental health. Um, a schedule of daily activities with accompanying links will be posted each day on the Mental Health Week um, Facebook page, which is the Brandt Mental Health Awareness Week Facebook page. So there's plenty of ways to take part in Mental Health Week and get the Absolutely. word out and for people to be involved. Yes, lots for everything, for every for everyone, um, every age group, and um, just lots of fun stuff to do virtually. Yeah. yeah, and it's amazing that you guys have adapted and are just ready. Moving forward from COVID-19, there's a lot of messaging about how businesses are going to go about reopening and how, you know, getting out, getting yes. active, how the world is going to adapt. Mm -hmm. what, it, what is the plan for the Canadian Mental Health Association to deal with the after of COVID-19? Sure. So that's a great question. Eventually, we will, we will reopen. There isn't a definitive date right now, but eventually we, we will reopen. Um, you know, we, we are ready for them. We know that mental health supports are expecting an echo pandemic of mental health problems to follow. So, so we're preparing and planning for this anticipated increase in demand and services. Sadly, there will be individuals who will be greatly impacted uh, by COVID, you know, with trauma and post-traumatic stress disorder, more specifically our first responders and healthcare uh, professions, most definitely. But we're ready for it. We, um, we're planning, we're anticipating um, increasing supports. And um, as I said, we are prepared for the echo pandemic that we, that we are anticipating uh, will follow. It's so important, I think, especially now it's Mental Health Week, that you, know, that you don't wait that we, we reach out, we connect with one another, and that if you, if you feel like you need help or if you wanna to talk to somebody, that you reach out for the support that's there, right? Yes, absolutely, Josh, Joshua, absolutely. Um, we are there, you know, I know that we hear that there's a lot of businesses closed and, and or working reduced hours, but we just want everyone to know that CMHA is fully operational. We are working five days a week, Monday to Friday, 8.30 to 4.30, so please reach out and call us. There are people available to answer the phone. Um, workers are being connected from the office phone, redirected to their cell phone, so we are available to assist. And finally, I think, uh, you know, just because I wanna make sure that anybody who wants to be involved or who, who wants to know more, how can somebody support, volunteer, or help uh, the Canadian Mental Health Association locally or wherever they might be uh, watching this video? 
Yeah, I mean, we're always interested in persons who like to support our work or would like to be a part of our organization. We have boards, committees, task forces, et cetera, that would benefit from having persons on them with relevant experience and expertise in the area of mental health. Uh, the Mental Health Promotion Program is always looking for persons interested in helping out with events and awareness activities. Um, if you're interested in, in um, supporting us financially, to donate locally to our branch, uh, you can visit our website at bhn.cmha.ca and there's a donate icon at the top right hand corner of our navigation screen. If you're interested in any in supporting any other branches in, in of the CMHAs in Canada, we have several branches throughout Canada. They're easily found also on our um, overseer sites such as CMHA National, who uh, oversees all of the Canadian branches, and we have an Ontario, CMHA Ontario branch, that oversees the Ontario branches. So they all have their own specific website with similar information on how to get involved. So there's no shortage of ways to help out. You can you know, okay. volunteer your time or if, you know, financially, yep. or even just spreading the word and, and sharing the message exactly. and, and helping tell people, right? And that's a wonderful way of supporting your local CMHA branch. <laughs> Thank you so much uh, for taking the time to sit down with me today and to answer my questions and to help spread the word about how important um, your mental health is. I really do appreciate it. You're very welcome. Thank you. And uh, I think this is going to be a really successful mental health week. And uh, I look forward to talking with you again soon. Okay. For sure. Thank Take you. Care.